So, um, before we go into the questions, we're going to make something very difficult now. Richard already introduced himself. But Karsten, if you could start, say us, tell us two sentences, what do you do, how you fit in the mobile world, and then pass on the microphone, please. Thanks a lot, uh, Marco. Um, I'm uh, Karsten, uh, CEO of uh, Madvertise. Uh, Madvertise is uh, one of uh, Europe's leading mobile um, advertising platforms uh, with um, 100 people um, all across uh, Europe uh, covering UK, France, Italy, Spain, um, uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and also the uh, Turkish market. Hi, my name is Nick Heinz. I'm CEO and founder of SOMO. We're the world's largest independent mobile marketing solutions company. Hey guys, uh, we have offices in London, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Singapore. Uh, we build apps, uh, we do strategy, and we run a, a very effective media agency. Hi, I'm uh, Eldar Tuvi. I'm founder of Snaply. We're a mobile data optimization company. We allow our users to shrink their 3G data by routing their traffic through our servers, where we compress it, optimize it, and secure it. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as a sort of personal trainer for your phone, put your data plan on a diet. Hello, I'm Mike, Mike Butcher. I'm the European editor for TechCrunch. Uh, we write about mobile startups, as well as all the other ones, and uh, venture capital. Hi, I'm Yasha Zamadi. I'm uh, with a company called Aprop. We are one of the leading ad companies in the German-speaking market. Um, covering 20 million unique users in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, and doing a lot of premium ad sales, uh, ad serving, and mobile monetization for publishers like IDG, United Internet, and Math Health. Okay, try to speak really clear because I didn't even hear what you said, and I'm really close to you. Hold the mic like a rock star, <laughs> like this. Okay, so we are trying to address three topics today. Topic number one, which is really a question about the ecosystems. Who is going to make it Apple, Android, or Microsoft Windows? The next area of questions we will have is around monetization. Is this screen too small to monetize? We all know about the Facebook IPO issue around monetizing mobile versus desktop. So we talk about monetization. And then the third topic, will be a discussion around, I guess, different uh, matters, especially there's a lot of interest around can the mobile be used for e-commerce or m-commerce. So let's start. Let's take an opinion poll of the audience, the kind of mobile here. Who do you think in five years' time will be the larger or the largest platform? We're going to take an opinion poll now. A very kind of manual one, very analog. Please hands up for the Apple ecosystem. <laughs> That's Zero. amazing. <laughs> one person. OK. That's quite telling. Maybe I should have started with the Android ecosystem. OK. So who uh, believes? Blackberry. Blackberry was the thing I used to use at Lehman, right? this thing with the many things on. Who believes in Windows Mobile? So that's very interesting. And i like to ask the panel about this outcome, which clearly tells us we should not invest into the Apple stock, but we should all look into investment opportunities on Android. Do you see it as binary as the audience? Maybe Karsten, you can say a few words. Well, um, I think uh, one thing is uh, clear that um, it's uh, not a, um, a done deal yet, uh, which platform will um, eventually uh, prevail. Yeah, so you have to speak a bit slow, <laughs> slowly and clear, otherwise nobody understands you. Um, in um, uh, my view, it's not a done deal yet uh, which uh, platform will actually uh, prevail, but um, if I uh, rewind by uh, five years, um, um, even um, some of the platforms which are leading today uh, were uh, not even um, on the horizon. Um, so I uh, wouldn't um, discount um, also some newcomers um, like uh, potentially um, Amazon. Um, so um, I think um, in five years time um, it might look um, uh, quite a bit uh, different uh, from what uh, we are seeing today. Um, so I uh, would uh, probably uh, disagree with the um, audience here. Okay, so Carson says, you guys are wrong. It's far too early to say. He doesn't put his hand up for one of the three. 
let him, uh, let's ask him if he revises. Who are the three you would bet on? I would uh, definitely bet on uh, Microsoft. Um, I would um, probably agree with the audience to um, as well bet on um, Google Android, uh, but I would um, also uh, put my hand up uh, for um, Amazon. Um, I think the, they make a big uh, push um, into the uh, mobile platform game um, and um, expect uh, some interesting stuff from them um, over the next years. Okay, so it's going to be interesting. Mike, Android, Apple, iOS, Android, I guess the key difference is the closed versus the open system. Oh, come Please on. comment. I mean, uh, look, I mean, people who think that Android is an open system obviously don't really know a lot about technology. Um, the, the key, one of the key things here you've got to remember, of course, is the sheer amount of legacy Apple devices there are out there. Every time they update the OS, you get an alert, you update the OS. Have you tried updating ice cream sandwich on a, on a, a latest Android? It's really a bit of a hit and miss issue here. Apart from anything else, out there, there are millions and millions of people with bank accounts now with Apple. Apple has those credit card numbers. Now, very, very, there's a much smaller proportion of people who've given that information over to the Google Play Store. Uh, there's the whole of that issue to, 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 to think about. And the other thing is mobile application developers, the people who are actually creating the apps, which people often make platform choices about. I mean, if you look at when Angry Birds came out, Windows and Microsoft fought tooth and nail to have Angry Birds on the first Windows Phone launches. Because it's much more about the apps and what people do, games are a very big part of this, uh, than it is, about, as it is as much as it is about the actual hardware device, okay? Because what you're staring at effectively is a screen, whether it be Android, Windows, or Apple. Uh, so I don't think, I think it's a little early to write Apple off, for starters. Of course, they're always going to be much bigger in developed markets because they tend to be a premium device. But the huge, the sheer amount of monetization that these guys are able to pull off, the fact that the, Apple, the developers love them. I mean, uh, developers uh, often, uh, the th thing about developing apps for Android is that the frameworks that you're given are kind of all a bit hodgepodge, uh, you know, you can make a really nice looking app in, still in Apple, and it's still tough to make a really nice looking app in Android, and the jury is out on the Windows platform right now. So you've got to think about those things. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, when it comes to Nick's business, Nick runs the largest mobile marketing business or agency worldwide. When customers come to you and they ask you to develop an app and the platform discussion comes and the pricing discussion, and I believe it's probably more expensive to develop on three versus on just one, tell us, do you see some change in what people are asking for only Apple, Apple and Android, are people asking about Windows? Maybe you have real-time data on what's happening on the app side. Uh, yes, we do. <clears throat> when we started out three years ago, definitely everyone wanted just an iPhone app and that was all they talked about. Now they need to be on at least the Android and iPhone ecosystems. But uh, the, the key point about this whole uh, discussion is that nobody knows. So for most of my clients, the big issue for them is the fact that nobody knows. We don't so is know it a momentum question? It is. Nobody knows exactly what's going to be happening. You know, the iPad's just over two years old. Nobody knows where we're going to be in a year's time. Um, so the key issue in terms of a service provider like ourselves is helping people negotiate, providing a compass for them about which way to go in this ecosystem. One of the biggest players in the market the world's ever seen, in fact, in technology is Microsoft and they have not got going yet. But all we've been doing so far has been servicing a consumer revolution. Mobile phones today are intrinsically consumer and personal based. With tablets and mobile phones now entering into the world of uh, proper business to business environments, proper corporate environments, where security, where consistency, where standards becomes absolutely paramount, we're gonna see an absolutely revolutional change just as great as we've seen so far. And that's where we'll be playing on Windows home turf. That's where we'll be playing with Microsoft with all the strengths of their organization. And when people start getting devices and products which the company's providing and they don't have to pay for, that's gonna be a very big influence about what kind of device they carry in their pocket. 
Okay, so I learned one thing, it's complicated. When it's complicated, we should speak to analytical people. <laughs> Richard, help us here. Sure. What is going to happen in five years? Apple, Android, iOS, so Windows? We, we see it through the lens of a developer, and uh, developers find right now the iOS ecosystem easier to monetize. So simply Mike's point around iTunes credit card Can processes. you give us some numbers? How much more does an iOS sure. user so, versus so an Android user monetize? We did analysis just after the launch of the Kindle Fire. It's about three months after. And if we set iOS as the benchmark at 100%, Kindle Fire had already matched to about 89%. But Android was adrift down at, I think, 21 22% relative monetization. That tells you, and I think Amazon Fire is at about parity with iOS, it tells you that developers monetize four times more on those ecosystems than they do Android. And is that a problem for Google? I think it's a problem and it's a challenge for anyone trying to make it easy for developers to connect with consumers and take money from those consumers. And so if there's a multitude of handsets, so you think about a developer developing for Android, they might test on, if they go mad, they might test on 12 devices and get it right for 12 devices. But when we see a new project launched on Android, we quickly see that the number of devices that have downloaded that application, that game, runs into the hundreds and thousands super quick. And getting the user experience right and getting the monetization right for Android is incredibly difficult. We talk about fragmentation, of course, in the, in the Google Play market, and that is a big challenge. We just talk from a developer's perspective. It's still, today, a lot easier to monetize on iOS and Amazon than it is on Android. Um, Having said that, there's more adoption on handsets on Android. There's so more, more users using Android. So the volumes are obviously demanding a lot of attention. So I this is all great news for Nick. But I think we have to be on all platforms. Mike. With Richard's point, to Richard's point, I mean, if ultimately, Google doesn't necessarily care hugely about the monetization aspect. They just want to be on all devices just all the usage time. Just for them. Because they're about eight information, data, okay. and they'll have you know, their own ad advertising networks. You know, effectively, Android is a Trojan horse inside the world's mobile phone networks in order to be able to create uh, vast amounts of profile data for, for, for Google. <laughs> Which they have to decouple and not clue together anymore. And, and maybe one question for Nick. When you look at content, I guess people do buy an iPhone or a Samsung phone also with the idea to do things with it. Play games, listen to music, etc. Is there a disadvantage as an Android user to not have access to as many apps as on iOS, given that the publishers of apps are probably more interested to be on but iOS, or is it a There's still a huge amount of choice. I mean, I think, I think in Google Play, compared to the Apple Store, I think there's almost amount, the same amount of choice. Okay. Uh, I think it's around 700,000 and 600,000 uh, between the two marketplaces. I think deduped, it's about 650, 700,000 okay. uh, pieces of unique content. Maybe to add a little bit from the advertising perspective, coming from from a lot of publisher discussions about monetization, we can see similar patterns on the publisher side as well as developers. Yes, I mean, yes, we know Android is growing. Android has been growing faster than, than Apple and iOS in the last one to two years probably. But also if you talk to advertisers investing in advertising on different platforms, we kind of see the same patterns, always investing more um, budgets and more volumes into the advertising on iOS than on Android. Um, being willing to pay more, two to two and a half uh, 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 times more reaching iOS audiences than Android audiences. So, so we can see the same patterns, the pricing and the volumes is that go different. An, the an Android user generates less money than an iOS user. That's interesting. Yeah. So because let's talk about advertising. And oh, so, Sorry. I, 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 I've been hesitant to enter this conversation because Fairly recently, we published some data about uh, the iOS 6 upgrade for our users, and we said that Apple Maps was not very popular. And uh, since then, we've been stalked by a bunch of Apple fans. There are very, very serious. You live dangerous now. On the, on the internet, you know, who is this company to publish this data? How big is their sample size? Who are they? So I'm hesitant to enter this conversation, but as a developer of, uh, on the iOS platform, I, I would say that you should definitely start shorting your Apple stock, which is, I know, what you're concerned about. I, I feel that their innovation is, is, has gone down somewhat, you know, by, by 
coming out with a different sized phone or a different sized tablet, that is somehow innovation. If McDonald's come out with a mini Big Mac, I don't think we would see that as innovation. So I, I, I worry about them. And as, as a developer, we find that they're quite restrictive. It takes a long time to get your app approved. They have a bunch of things that they want you to do. So it's quite, it's quite challenging. Obviously, the, the, the install base is huge. Uh, and uh, for that reason, everyone's going to keep using iOS. But it, the, I, there are some concerns there. So it, it, it remains to be interesting. Let's go to topic number two. Let's talk about advertising. And let's talk about the fact that the usage, the mobile usage, is cannibalizing the desktop usage. Yet the screen is so much smaller by definition because it needs to fit in our pocket. So you can put only a few things on there. And by definition, you're not able to charge as much because there are not so many annoying pop-ups. Carson, or maybe you start. What do you say about that? Well, if, um, um, I'm uh, speaking with our large clients like Audi and Volkswagen and Unilever and Procter and Gamble. Um, they are worried about um, how do I reach uh, the next uh, billion consumers? And um, in all their minds, it's uh, very clear that it will be through the uh, mobile phone. So uh, for them, it's uh, less um, relevant um, if they're reaching somebody on an iOS or Android or Amazon platform. And if the um, screen is a bit um, smaller and their brand message, uh, which they can get across, is uh, maybe a little bit uh, less powerful than um, on a television or on a desktop. Um, um, but they do understand that in uh, many of the uh, developing markets, um, um, the only device uh, where they will be able to reach the uh, consumer um, it will be the uh, mobile. And therefore, um, I think... Um, and is that an international, is this an international thing, given that in some countries, mobile phone penetration is larger than computer penetration? Sure, that's a uh, different market by market. And um, uh, there's uh, markets like um, India and China and Philippines and Indonesia and South Africa and Saudi Arabia, where the mobile internet penetration is already higher okay. than um, on desktop. Um, so um, those are the markets uh, where, obviously, uh, the market is a lot more advanced than, for example, here in the UK. I think the, uh, the comparison is, is inappropriate. I'm afraid it's the wrong. Excuse me? It's the wrong question, Marco. I'm famous for asking the wrong question. It's the wrong question. And the reason why it's the wrong question is not about shrinking things that people do on the internet or on a, on a fixed screen, etc. It's about the attributes of mobile and utilizing those attributes of mobile to achieve whatever your marketing objective is. So uh, the most popular time of use of a mobile phone is, between, is not when you're on the bus or on the train. It is between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. at night when it's sitting with you on the sofa watching TV. It is the most powerful direct response mechanism we've ever seen. The advert, the, the, the change in consumer behavior trigger comes up on the TV. Yeah, can you speak up a little bit? Sorry. Sorry, the, uh, the advert appears on the TV. It's triggering, hopefully, a change in consumer behavior. And people reach, the first thing they reach for is either their mobile phone or the tablet on the coffee table. So you're saying advertising on mobile is great because the consumer loves their mobile phone more than their desktop because it has it always with them. It's always there, it's always with okay. you. It's the remote control of your life. You look for it for certain things. With a mobile phone, it's about quick response, about instant. It's uh, interactive. It's quick, quick, solve my problem. With a tablet, it's about leisure, it's about enjoying the experience, it's about sharing the experience. Completely different okay. dynamics involved. Okay, that's but very you've got to utilize those to meet your marketing objective. Okay, that's very interesting. Richard, I'm interested in pricing. You are the numbers guy. And I have a lot of sympathy with numbers. <laughs> um, I was told the biggest problem of mobile advertising monetization today is too much usage. So it's hard to have high advertising pricing in mobile advertising because there's just so much supply and inventory. Is that true? And what has happened to price over the last, let's say, 24 months? So pricing on different types of media is changing a lot. Uh, if you look at user acquisition through cost per install or cost per download, that's actually on the increase. There's uh, intense competition for developers around the world to acquire new users and only pay for the download and the install. So I, I'm going to specifically focus on that. The second big channel that we've seen huge growth in is video. And I think it's one of the most exciting. Uh, I was with uh, ITV yesterday, and they were talking about how their TV sales guys are rolling up video on demand and TV spots as one channel. 
Um, and I think that's exactly right. So if you look at high definition 30 second commercials on a tablet between seven and 10, I think that's a very, very exciting challenge. And I think, again, the pricing is going up. Where the pricing is diluting and it's become a commodity are those standard, perhaps annoying, banners and takeover that sit inside applications that could be seen as intrusive to the content. And I think there is a bit of a race to zero on that standard media. What I mentioned in my presentation is that we're actually trying to make that more scientific by providing profiling of the device on age, gender, and personas, so that actually you're not bidding blind on a, an impression, because every impression just becomes the same. Actually, you're bidding potentially on an exchange, and there are real-time bidding exchanges. So you're coming. talking about targeting. So you're, you're, so you're making the connection between the brand and the audience by bidding not only on the impression, but appending that impression with very valuable data so that the brand is actually reaching, reaching the right people. Angry Birds is a very, very interesting option for advertisers, but not all users. Okay. If you're selling nappies, you only want to reach young mums. No point advertising nappies to me. I do put them on my child, but I don't ever buy them. Absolutely pointless to advertise nappies to me. That's the difference. OK. So I, think a lot of I think uh, Richard's on something here, the two screen media. Uh, movement now, uh, people watching TV and on a tablet device is a big deal. But what I think also, also is there are going to be enormous amounts of creative disruption amongst mobile advertising networks. We've got some on the panel here. Not all of them will survive, quite simply. That's basically going to happen. Some of them will, will win, some of them won't. And it's about scale, it's about analytics, it's about targeting. Um, and and a, a lot of it is also going to be about the applications that people use and how, you know, how, much people, uh, that, how much data is let through those applications, like Zbox, et cetera. Mm. Well, it's also about tracking. And that's probably the biggest handicap for both sides of the ecosystem, those who buy, like us, and those who sell, like the publisher networks. Without the uh, accurate and dependent tracking, it's very difficult to convince marketeers to seriously spend money in this space. And because that's being constrained by a lack of tracking, um, then we're seeing a, a, a reduction in the rate of growth in advertising okay, sector. So let's That's talk why the 200 will, uh, ad networks that are out there today will only be 100 within 12 okay, months. Okay, I think that's a very interesting point. And let's, let's talk about the Google question. So how important is Google in the mobile network? I think I read somewhere iAd, which is, I guess, an Apple product, has significant market share mobile advertising. Um, maybe Richard enlighten us, mobile advertising, marketing, Mike was saying there are so many ad networks in the mobile world, um, do they all matter or is it kind of a game between Apple and Google and some independents? There, there is a bewildering number of choices and I mentioned in my presentation around fragmentation, it not making it easy for marketers or indeed specialist agencies like SOMO and I was with your head of trading the other day and he told me how many points of buying a couple of months ago. And it was, it was in the 80s or 90s. That's 80 or 90 places that you can buy mobile. Mike's absolutely right. There has to be consolidation. Um, and you've got to think about it from the brand and the agency's perspective. Make it easy, make it scalable, make it targetable, make it measurable. If okay. you can do all these things, the mobile advertising industry will realize its ambition. Elder, when we prepared for this panel, I asked you to repeat something on stage. You ha Elder had a very interesting way of describing the high street. M may you repeat? Uh, yeah, I just said that the, the high street is just a, a showroom now for, for you to then go and buy the, the product online. So basically, all the stores we walk into are just there to get inspired to shop, and eventually we just use it as a showroom and interact online by buying. Mike. Have you seen interesting commerce businesses mobily? Well, I think w this is the point at which we ought to um, raise the issue of two things. What are the most interesting things going to happen over in mobile in the next couple of years? And secondly, where are the investors going to go? So the first of the, one of the things that I see most of all very interestingly now, you can uh, bump across any kind of little shithead startup in Shoreditch uh, doing a mobile app these days. Uh, you know, connect with your friends, who's around you, find events around you, mobile affiliate plays, you know, book tickets, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there's some big companies, actually, there's one particular company, very interesting, called Songkick, uh, who are really acing it on mobile ticketing right now for, you know, bands that you want to go and see. 
But other than that, there are very, very few companies that are really, really good at that mobile social thing. Um, one of the thing, most interesting things I see is the, the confluence between mobile devices, apps, and hardware. So smartphones, a app inside the smartphone, and hardware is going to be really, really interesting right now. Uh, medical devices, health tracking, Nike Fuel Band. The Nike Fuel Band is just the tip of the iceberg of what's going to happen over the next couple of years. I saw a company called Sweet in Sweden called Memoto. Uh, they have a little device which basically just takes video all day. You tap it to your, your collar, takes video, integrates with your smartphone. Very, very interesting. Um, but the other thing is where are the investors going to go? You guys just raised 25 million bucks, right? Friday. Flurry. Uh, you know, when's the IPO? You guys just raised, what, was it a million or so? A uh, million or so. You guys, every, a, we've got companies here raising money. And now, so where are the investors going to go? Are they going to take bets on the mobile ad networks? Are they going to take bets on apps or apps and devices? That's what's interesting to me right now. Elder, so much going on in the mobile internet, watching movies, playing games. You know this question was coming because Elder has an app which accelerates the traffic through the telecom networks. I, he is helping the British telecoms, the telefonicas of the world to make their networks more efficient. However, he still needs the user to install the app. Now, I have a question for you. Shall I be worried about my phone bill, my mobile phone bill? Are the networks capable of carrying all the great mobile entertainment offerings accessible for users? Uh, you should definitely be worried about your mobile bill, given your activity on it. But um, I think. We, we see our users, um, and a lot of them are very concerned about bill shock when they're roaming, etc. All, all the issues that I'm sure we're all familiar with. And that's what our service tries to do, is to compress that data to, to make it more manageable so you're actually paying less on your bills. We do that completely independently of the operators. We've actually had conversations with all the big operators, both here and in the U.S., uh, and surprisingly, or maybe not that surprisingly, their, their revenues, their top line comes from selling data. So they're not actually that interested in compressing it. They could very easily do that, but they, they, they choose not to because then they can charge more on their bills, unsurprisingly. Okay, we're going to do two things now. Uh, first of all, we're going to make a statement. Mobile is much more complicated than I anticipated. However, I found some very interesting lessons, and I'd like to say thanks to the panel participants. And if you have questions about mobile advertising, I think you have some great experts here on stage. But before I release you guys to lunch, I want to ask another platform question. What's the mobile phone of your choice? What's in your pocket? What are you using today? iPhone. iPhone. 4S is an operating system, or it's also a phone? iPhone. You. iPhone. iPhone. You, Mike iPhone 4S, and it's the last, and I didn't upgrade to iOS 6 because I like Google Maps. iPhone what? 5 and BlackBerry. Sorry? iPhone 5 and BlackBerry. iPhone 5 and BlackBerry. 4 OS, iOS 6, and I miss Google Maps. Okay, that's very interesting, people. <laughs> it's very interesting, isn't it? I wasn't expecting it, but you guys are saying Apple is dead, and we try to get the most innovative mobile experts from Europe on stage and none of them today have an Android phone in their pocket. Samsung Something Galaxy is 3 wrong is pretty here. good. Something is wrong here. And let's discuss at lunch. Thank you very much. <laughs>